Today, the Kern County Black Chamber of Commerce is set to host a public workshop that will help map the future of transportation here in Kern County. The Kern Council of Governments is conducting the public workshop as part of a process to update Kern County's regional transportation. The workshop will give residents a chance to provide feedback on how transportation tax dollars should be used. It's an interactive way to get input and then after every question, a graph displays and shows how many people selected this or the other. The workshop is happening at the Friendship House located at 2424 Cottonwood Drive. It starts at 530 and runs until 730. The Bakersfield Police Department wants to keep your kids safe while riding bicycles as we cruise into summer. The BPD Traffic Section and Community Relations Units hosting its annual bike rodeo at Silver Creek Park today from 5 to 7 p.m. The rodeo will include events like bike inspections, maintenance, and there will be a course set up for riders to practice their safety skills. It is open to children of all ages. Pacific Gas and Electric surprised a Bakersfield High School student with a PG&E Better Together scholarship during the school's senior awards ceremony. It was a night of honor for all students, but for one senior, it was a night with a big surprise. During the ceremony, Ross, the senior, was presented with a $20,000 scholarship, the money giving him a head start on financial stability to further his education. And we're thrilled to be here today at BHS to present this. For me, uh, it's extra uh, personal because I'm a BHS graduate. So for PG&E, it's just a great opportunity uh, to provide a young man uh, like Ross this type of a scholarship for his education. Ross will now be heading to Cal Poly where he'll study engineering. All right, still to come here on 23ABC, get ready to have the time of your life all over again. Dirty Dancing back in an all-new made-for-TV musical right here on 23ABC. And another classic movie returning to the big screen, and it may be top-notch. I'll have to give you the details next on 23ABC. Welcome back to 23ABC, and you are taking a live look outside a vigil in England for the victims of the Manchester bombing attack. And as you can see, it just continues to grow this morning. At least 22 people, as you know, were killed in that attack uh, after an Ariana Grande concert on Monday night. T today, British officials have said they've arrested three suspects now uh, in the attack. Well, California Theater is offering an unusual experience for its guests to help illustrate a theme in the show. The San Francisco Dungeon Theater says it's going to host several rat cafe experiences this summer. Mm. Yeah, the rat cafe is part theater enhancement and part animal rescue. Well, here's what guests will experience. Coffee and a snack, and then the rats come out and play. Now, ambassador rats are taken to each table to get to know those who may or may not have ever seen a rat up close, much less ever touch one. So that's a story that we tell here at San Francisco Dungeon. We really wanted to think about how we could combine that story of plague and rats with something new and exciting for the dungeon. And we thought, what better way than to have people experience rats in person with some coffee and a Danish before they see the dungeon show in person. The rats are provided by the Ratty Rats of Northern California. It's a rescue organization dedicated to finding a home for its wayward rats. The organization wants to send the message that domestic rats can make great pets. Mm -hmm. Tonight, a much-loved movie will be coming to the small screen. Abigail Breslin and Colt Pratt, is it Pratt's? Yeah, star in the remake of Dirty Dancing. Breslin playing Baby, the role made famous by Jennifer Grey. I definitely, yeah, I felt a lot of pressure, mostly from one of my best friends, Celine. Um, she's a huge fan of Dirty Dancing, and she was like, if you don't do a good job, I will kill you. <laughs> no pressure. Dirty Dancing premieres tonight on 23 ABC. And a lot of people really want to see Wonder Woman. The upcoming movie is the most anticipated of the summer, according to Fandango. The ticket buying website topped the must see list, followed by Spider Man Homecoming and the fifth Pirates of the Caribbean film. Pirates opens this weekend and Wonder Woman opens next weekend, but you'll have to wait until July for Spider Man. Hmm. Kind of want to see Wonder Woman.
Another movie that people are going to be really excited about is Top Gun 2. Apparently it is coming back. Tom Cruise confirmed that he will start shooting the sequel to the 1986 classic and that filming should begin sometime this year. As seen in a tweet here by Jerry Bruckheimer, he posted this picture saying just met with Cruise to talk details. But other than that, nothing else was mentioned, including where the movie will be filmed or who will be in it. All right, we've got much more to come in our next half hour. Security ramping up across the globe in response to that terrorist attack at a concert in England. We'll tell you why Britain's fearing another attack on their soil could be carried out. As President Trump is set to meet with leaders in Italy, new details from overnight about his visit with the Pope. You're watching 23 ABC. Good morning, Kern County. You're watching 23 ABC News at 6. Great Britain remains on edge. We'll tell you why many people are worried that even more attacks could be imminent as the nation tries to heal from the deadly concert attack. And a local attorney facing accusations of fraud after taking millions of dollars from Medi-Cal. More on this elaborate scheme coming up. Good morning, everyone. This is 23 NBC News at 630. I'm Alex Montes. I'm Mike Hart. Glad you're here. Let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Elena Ruska to look at that storm shield as uh, our friend is starting to show up off the coast. What's where's, his friend? Where's, where's the big L been? Oh, hanging L. out in Baja, having a survey <laughs> call it? Larry, <laughs> Laura. <laughs> no, no name storms just right. set. A, a low. Uh, we are talking about hurricane season, though, already starting in the Pacific. I was showing you a tropical storm that started with an A, so the next one that forms will be a B, but nothing on the radar just yet. You're seeing some high thin clouds coming through with, yes, that disturbance that's just off the shore, Mike, but we're still at 71 here in Bakersfield. It doesn't really give us any relief from the heat, just some thin passing clouds at noon. By then, it's already up to 90 degrees. So I'd say if you want to take your dog to the park, it's good to do that before lunchtime because then later this afternoon, you're just going to have to break out the ice cream if you have to be outside. 99 are high today. As for your traffic to get you out the door now, we are seeing a crash down there south on the 99 just past town, but as of right now, no slowing. Very good. All right, let's show you some live pictures right now uh, of a makeshift memorial that was uh, being built outside a, uh, a a building in England for victims of the Manchester bombing attack. And it looks like that uh, some of the, some people are now gathering up some of those items right now. At least 22 people died during the attack uh, after the Ariana Grande concert on Monday night. And we also know that British police have arrested three more suspects in connection to that Manchester suicide bombing. Right now, Britain deploying soldiers to key sites, including Buckingham Palace, after raising that terror threat level. NBC's Molly Hunter has the latest for Manchester. This morning in the UK, the terror threat level at critical, its highest level. Prime Minister Theresa May saying another attack may be imminent. It comes after police say a man detonated a suicide bomb at an Ariana Grande concert just as the show let out, killing 22 people. Bethany Keeling was right near the exit when the bomb went off. I saw like flash, like an explosion flash. I grabbed my friend's hand and just, just ran. Um, but we looked and we could see the bodies on the floor. The London tabloid The Sun publishing the first picture of the alleged bomber, 22-year-old Salman Abedi, born in Britain to parents from Libya. In their investigation, police blowing the door off his Manchester home just miles from the concert arena, looking for evidence, including his phone and computer. I think the use of a bomb here, as opposed to a car or a knife, demonstrates a much higher degree of sophistication by this individual, really suggesting that he probably did not act alone, that he probably had some help, that he certainly had some advice on how to create the bomb. As we learn more about the victims, Safi Russos, the youngest known victim at just eight years old, a teacher remembered her as simply a beautiful little girl in every aspect of the word, who was loved by everyone. 18-year-old Georgina Callender, this is the teenage superfan pictured with Grande here two years ago. And 15-year-old Olivia Campbell, before knowing of her passing, Olivia's oh, uncle stood at the hospital doors showing everyone her picture hoping for answers and this morning many many more still missing martin het separated from his friends at the end of the show and this mother wendy fowl who hasn't been seen since the concert and on the cover of nearly every newspaper today sufi russo's eight years old the youngest victim and police have told families waiting they will have many more answers today in manchester molly hunter abc news 
And Manchester health officials are now saying that the number of wounded has grown. It's now saying it's 119 people that were injured from the attack. It was raised due to the amount called walking wounded who are now just seeking treatment. And as we learned, the number of those who have died is staying at 22 people and new deaths are being confirmed. Their names being released. Marcin and Angelica Cleese is one of them. They were parents who were coming to pick up their children who were attending. The Polish Prime Minister announcing that these two names were the ones who were lost after their 20 year old daughter put out a plea on Facebook and many are still missing friends and family also posting on social media hoping they can find them a tweet here Liam Curry and Chloe Rutherford from South Shields and another tweet saying Nell Jones who works with my boyfriend please retweet and share also checking in on Ariana Grande she actually made it to Florida yesterday to get home paparazzi photos showing her reunited with her boyfriend friend Mac Miller. The look on her face is of devastation. You can tell that she's being up, is upset while she's being comforted by him. And after her arrival, it has been confirmed that the rest of her tour has been canceled. The news we are following this morning. President Trump is now off to Belgium for a NATO summit after meeting with Pope Francis privately at the Vatican. The Pope gave Trump copies of his three main teaching documents. The Pope typically gives those gifts to visiting heads of state. It's still not clear what the two talked about, but the president also met with the Italian president as well. And new developments on the investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 election and whether or not members of the Trump campaign were involved. Leaders of the Senate Russia Investigation Committee issued two subpoenas to two businesses run by former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. They say he cannot claim the fifth this time around because corporations do not have that right. Donald Trump has hired a private lawyer to represent him during the Russia investigation. Back here at home, an Oildale family is seeking justice, they say, after a man was shot and killed Monday as he allegedly showed up for an arranged fist fight. The family of 35-year-old Dustin Johnson say he was murdered by his ex-father-in-law. 23 ABC spoke to Johnson's stepdad, George Reed, who claims it all began with a feud on Facebook between Johnson and a family acquaintance. Reed says the two men decided to settle it with a fight, agreeing to meet at an apartment complex on Olive Drive. He says when he and Johnson got to the apartments, that Johnson went walking towards the other man and the suspect, Raymond Rankin. They told him to come over because there's grass there, you know, so they could fight on the grass. And it never got to that point. When Dustin got like within 10 feet from him, he lifted the shotgun up from his side and, and shot him. Rankin's family is claiming that Johnson was the aggressor, saying that he had a knife. Rankin was questioned by homicide detectives and released pending further investigation. We're going to continue to follow this story, bring you any new developments as we get them and post them to our website. A Bakersfield man accused of shooting and killing a Montana deputy will be in court next week. On Tuesday, Broadwater County Sheriff's Deputy Mason Moore was laid to rest. He was shot by Lloyd Barris and his son Marshall during a traffic stop on May 16th. According to court documents obtained by 23ABC, Lloyd Barris claimed the two were on a, quote, suicide mission targeting law enforcement. His son was killed in a shootout with deputies last week. Lloyd Barris is now facing 16 felony counts that include attempted murder. He'll be back in court on the 31st. Today, a local attorney will speak publicly for the first time since accusations that he and his family set up a health care scheme. That's right. The attorney, Philip Ganong, and his wife, Pamela, each face the potential of 47 years in prison. 23ABC's James Johnson live at Ganong's office with details on this alleged scheme. James? Yeah, that's right, Mike and Alex. According to the Orange County District Attorney's Office, Philip Ganon is being charged in a $22 million insurance billing scheme. Now, according to the DA's office, they say between the years of 2012 and 2014, Ganon, along with his wife, his son, other family members, and doctors set up fake sober living homes in an effort to bill insurance companies, then pocket the money. Now, the sober living homes were set up here in Bakersfield, Orange County, and in L.A. The Ganons allegedly billing more than $22 million 
dollars uh, in fake services to four insurance companies. In turn, investigators say they were able to profit $15 million. Now, 23 ABC News uh, reached out to the Ganons for comment, and they said they wanted to wait until this morning uh, during a press conference set up at their uh, office here on Truxton Avenue. Again, we're going to keep you updated on this uh, story throughout the day on our website and on our mobile and tablet apps. Reporting live, James Johnson, 23 ABC. The Kern County Fire Department will be undergoing an audit for the next few months. Yesterday, the board unanimously approved a proposal to investigate the work culture and funding of the agency. Union leaders for the fire department say the audit is an excuse to reduce funding for public safety. Board members are expected to get results from the audit by the end of the year. The Bakersfield City Fire Department will be taken to the skies this 4th of July to crack down on illegal fireworks. Firefighters say drones will be used only over public roadways. The drones will be an extra set of eyes in the sky, helping to direct task force members on the ground to where those illegal fireworks are being set off. This morning, Honor Flight is hosting a special reunion. It's happening at 1130 at Cafe Med on Stockdale Highway. Today they will be gathering the first 21 veterans five years ago that took part in the very first Honor Flight. Honor Flight Kern County sends local veterans, as you know, to Washington, D.C. to tour the memorials built. In their very cool. Bus. Get a look. See, there's the big L. L. Right down there. H is stone control. Ah. It's bullying the L. So only a little bit of thin cloud cover coming through with that disturbance just offshore. High pressure dominates sinking air, very stagnant, plenty of sunshine. So that means the UV index is still very high today, but you will have those thin clouds coming through. It'll be breezy in the mountains, but for us here on the valley floor, still very stagnant, only about 5 to 15 mile an hour breezes. So enough smog that our air quality continues to climb. It's still unhealthy for sensitive groups. And here in Bakersfield, we're finally starting to see some cooling loose air quotes. Temperatures will fall a few degrees from where they were yesterday. Right now we're at 71. Tatchby at 59. Fraser Park only 46. But look at later today. This 99 in Bakersfield still well above our average of 86. In the mountains you do get that fresh breeze. So knocking you down to 91 in Kernville and Isabella. 81 in Tatchby. 78 in Fraser Park. That's a nice day. Down into our desert. Obviously still some 100s there. I'll talk about Friday's significant cooling coming up next. All right, thank you, Elena. Coming up on 23ABC News, thousands of bees attack a mom and baby, sending, to, sending them to the hospital. We'll tell you how a good Samaritan stepped in to the rescue. And a sleeping man caught on camera. Stay tuned to see what police had to do to wake him up next on 23ABC.